Hi, hey, and hello. This is Alex from Xantrex. Today I wanted to talk to you about recovery mode. Now this is a, uh, a really useful feature with the Xantrex smart batteries, which we have over here. Uh, when you get below 0% uh, SOC, state of charge, on your eGen system. I was going to go over a couple things with this. Uh, primarily, I've got my screen over here I'm going to look at. Uh, it brings the batteries back if you're below 12 volts. So it'll bring it up to the 12 volt range so that you can actually start taking a normal charge with it. Uh, if it gets too low, you don't want to hit those cells with too much, uh, uh, too much power. Otherwise, you could damage things, right? So uh, recovery mode is a good way to just kind of bring it up slowly so that we don't damage it, uh, the, the whole battery itself. Next up, several ways that uh, recovery mode uh, is useful. Why do we have to have recovery mode, right? Well, if you turn the vehicle on, that's a uh, ignition source, that'll wake the batteries up. So if you're at that very low state of charge, if you're almost at zero, uh, you turn the batter or the vehicle on, it'll wake the batteries up, and then you have a 300 second timer, and that will, uh, that'll start the timer again, and then it'll drain power along the way while you're doing that. Same thing with the plugging into shore. If you plug it into shore and then you unplug it real quick, it'll wake the batteries up and they'll go into kind of a, a 300 second countdown timer again, right? The only time it won't is with solar. That's the third way to charge. Solar's turned on by the batteries. So if the batteries are not on, solar's not active, right? So we won't have to worry about that one. So let's go ahead and get into this and take a look. All right, this is kind of my Dynamax setup that I have here. We have a Freedom uh, XC Pro, whoop, right here, XC Pro 3000 here, and we have two of our Xantrex smart batteries. And then off to the side here, you can see we have our eGen screen. You actually have a computer monitor there. You can see what day and time it is. Um, we are going to turn the batteries on. Now, this is not attached to shore at all. This is just strictly on battery power itself. And what we're going to see is that when we power this on, and this is all set up uh, as the Dynamax ISATA 3 right now, and so what's going to happen is the parent battery, this guy right here, is going to turn on, the whole system is going to turn on, and then it's going to shut off immediately. We have the inverter powering up, parent battery is on, child battery is doing the slow flash up and down. We have our 300 second timer over here. And the whole system collapses. Now it's doing that because it doesn't see any shore power, so it's not going to stay, or not shore, or engine power, so it's not going to stay active for us. Now, I... This is traditionally going to be, uh, these two leads are going to be attached to a relay, which I have right here. Uh, that's going to be your AC side. Down here, you're going to be naturally open and, uh, or normally open, I guess, and common. That's going to be used uh, to basically tell the system that it has shore power. What I'm going to do, and connect these two together, and that's going to simulate that shore power is attached. Now with those two leads put together, it's gonna to simulate shore is attached, and that's what we're gonna see up here in this corner. We no longer have that timer, but we are going to have the system collapse. Now, why is it doing that? It's because the battery is telling us that it's undercharged, right? And this is that lead that I was telling you about that I swooped together. So in this instance, what we would probably wanna do is disconnect our 20 pin connector here. That way, the batteries can no longer talk to the inverter, right? So when we power the system back up, the batteries cannot tell the inverter that, hey, we're undercharged, don't charge us. What is then going to happen, takes about 45 seconds for the batteries to come online. Looks like we just have the one right now. And there's the second battery. And I have this in advanced mode right now. 
and slowly after uh, a few seconds more it'll start populating all the rest of the values here but you can see that we're at 6.8 volts down here at the bottom and so what we're going to need to do is put this into um, recovery mode which we can tell uh, first we have a flash too, too fast too slow that happens here on the SOC screen and we're also going to see it here on the battery itself. And so over here we can see using the F2 function button, cell undervolt, right? And that's what CUV stands for. Uh, we can clear it. It's not going to clear because the battery is inherently undervolted, so it's not going to do very much. Well, it did, it looks like, but it'll probably come right back. And what we're going to need to do is we'll need to plug this in so that we can actually get charging. So I'm just going to plug this into the wall. All right, so we're plugged in. We're going to run on down to battery number two, which is in need of recovery. We're going to hit the recovery button. And immediately you're going to see over here, C stands for current. Uh, so we have 0.6 amps going into the battery. And we'll start to see the voltage rise. And this, unfortunately, is going to take about 24 hours for us to do. Now, if you're severely low, if you're well below where we were starting is like 7 volts, something around there, um, you may need longer than 24 hours. It may take uh, 42 hours. It may even take a week. Um, it's just depending on how severely discharged this is. We can't bring them back too quickly, otherwise we're going to damage some things.